If you get infected with the brain-eating amoeba, you're in big trouble. This parasite is an out-and-out -out killer. But while its actions often have deadly consequences, the amoeba hijacks the brain for a benign reason. To find food and shelter. Inside the brain, the amoeba has a perfect environment to feed and reproduce. You have food, heat, moisture. It's perfect for them to live their lives. The amoeba has a two-pronged attack. First, it hijacks the host cells using special feet called pseudopods. Then, the amoeba cuts a hole in the cell wall. And when the contents of the cell leak out, the amoeba eats them. Not only are the amoeba ruthless killers, they also have a cunning method of evading the body's immune system. The amoeba can defend itself by forming a coat, which is called a cyst. And this coat surrounds the amoeba and is impervious to the host's immune system. When the body's white blood cells attack, the amoeba forms its protective coat. The white blood cells latch onto the coat, but can't get through. Then the amoeba sheds the coat and escapes unharmed, leaving the white blood cells behind. What happens is that when the amoeba gets into the brain, in a sense, it's holding the brain hostage. So when the body sends in its immune system to try to defuse the hostage situation, often it does even more damage as a result. The amoeba lives in a cyst in sediment on the bottom of lakes. As the water warms, the amoeba emerges from the cyst and begins to divide. At this stage, the amoeba can infect humans. When conditions become unfavorable, the amoeba forms a cyst again, and the life cycle repeats. And even in warm water, some simple measures can protect swimmers. The way to prevent deaths from occurring, first of all, is to educate the public about this disease. And secondly, it would be very important to wear nose plugs when doing recreational activities such as diving or wakeboarding where you're underwater quite a bit.